Welcome back to our next video module on uh, statics. I've been pretty excited about this one in particular because we're going to start finally putting things together and um, taking what we've learned thus far and using it to move forward and do some things that we couldn't otherwise do. Thus far it's been pretty simple, it's mostly been review, but uh, you'd be surprised if we start putting this stuff together what we're able to do. Now that said, I'd like to kind of throw some, throw an idea out there for you. Let's let's go back to our original problem, and that was the one of the barge, and we had this barge being pulled by, um, you know, A and B, and uh, in that case, fortunately, we knew that uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, tugboat A, it's tugboat A and tugboat B, and we had that. Um, being pulled in such a way that they were going equally up and down, so the forces were equally up and down, so the barge was moving in this direction. However, you can imagine me changing this just a little bit, and suddenly it gives you some grief. Let's imagine that there's a barge here, we'll call it C, and a barge here, we'll make that one super easy, D, barge here, E, and kind of to balance things off up here, barge F. Now I'm going to ask the same questions. Let's let's give it a center of mass right here and say what does the barge feel? What's happening? Well, let's take a look at barge C or, uh, or or let's look at tugboat C. Tugboat C is pushing in this direction. It's pushing it up but it's doing something else. It's also that force isn't at the center of the barge. It's at the edge. It's going to want to rotate it. The same for tugboat F. It's pushing down, so you're going to have one component pushing down, you're going to have another component of the force pushing this way, but then in addition, that force, it's not going through the center of the mass, it's going over here, it's going to want to rotate in this direction, counterclockwise, I'm sorry, clockwise. Here we have uh, bar, or <laughs> there I go again, tugboat D, it's pushing right through the center, so it's going to have a force going in this way, it's not going to induce, oh sorry, let's keep that, uh, let's keep those colors uh, consistent. It's going to have a force, but it's not going to have any torque. Good news. Well, um, tugboat E is on this side of the center of gravity. Let's make the center of gravity stick out a little more. It's right here. It's on uh, this side of the center of gravity, which means it's going to want to rotate it. Okay, so you have all, and in addition, tugboat E is also pushing in the vertical direction, pushing in the horizontal direction. You have all these things happening. If you're the barge, what do you feel? What's going on? And if you really want to like take it up a notch, is the barge going to rotate? And how quickly is it going to rotate? Is it going to speed up? Now, we're not going to, the, going to get to those problems in this course, but on our next course, who will? And so we have to understand what are the forces and the torques acting on this barge. Today, we're going to talk about equivalent systems. I'm going to give you seven rules, and these rules will guide you through taking complex problems like this barge, like really crazy trusses, like cranes. It's going to tell, guide you through complex systems and simplify them as effectively as we can. Fortunately, in order to do so, we're only going to bring up one new concept at the very end. All the rest of this, it's stuff you've already learned. So let me pull up some old lessons and we'll get going. So let's return to our barge problem. I have um, here our barge problem after we started looking at the uh, at the force triangle. And I'd like you to note something. And that's here up here we have our force triangle, the way we had it set up. And what I did is I l added these vectors together. In this case, remember, everything was stable. So the sum of the forces, if I add them all together, it's going to be zero. So I took force A, tugboat A, added tugboat B, and then I added the drag of the tugboat to come back to the origin which would be zero. We're adding all three vectors together, we end up with zero. What this means is that we can say that if we add vectors, add say two vectors or three vectors, 
we can come up with an equivalent factor. Now in this case, the equivalent factor was zero, but it's not hard for us to imagine. Here, let, let's, let's give ourselves a little bit of space, sorry. Back to here. We can say force A plus force B. That is the same as, say, we'll call it force T for the force of the tugboat. There we go, force T. And uh, so what we, if we were to use that with our force triangle, um, well, it wouldn't be a triangle anymore, but you'd have the force of the tugboat is equal to the force of the drag, force tugboat, and then force drag, and you'd be right back to zero. Let's go back to our template, or let's go back to our uh, original diagram and write that down. Here we go. If we take A plus B, that is the same as one vector C that combines the two. And of course, we'd assume that um, this is A and this is B and they're combined. Uh, the one thing I am doing is I'm doing three dashes here. That's kind of like saying equivalent. It, I'm not ready to say equals, but they're roughly equivalent. I'm not setting up an equation, but you know, you can both sides of the equation, they're, they're the, at fundamentally the same thing. All right, the second item we're going to look at is l let's say that here we've added um, vectors together force and a force is another force. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to say something and then we'll take a look at where we've seen this before. If we take a torque A plus a torque B, that is the same as a torque C. Uh, obviously, assuming that we have A plus B. And just for the record, these don't have to be 90 degrees. And the reason why this is true is because these are both vectors. So if you are uh, from a math perspective, whether or not you're adding torques or you're adding forces, it's the same thing. Um, however, let's try and get an intuitive feel of where we've seen this happen before. Here we are back at our swing problem. This is the one where we had to swing on the porch. We just finished it up. And in this case, we had a force. It was kind of operating in a funky direction. So we did our free body diagram right here. And what we did is we took the sum of the torques we knew were zero because it was staying still, right? And at the time, we used it to find the torque at, uh, at this area, the torque about A, you know, so we knew what was happening at the house. However, we, we did something somewhat subversive here, and I didn't really go over it too much, but let's check this out. We separated the forces and the radii into their components rather than doing it as a vector form. So we said, okay, this force C right here, that's going to induce a torque about A. So we said, okay, we're going to have a vertical component of that force right here, and that was 50 newtons right here or 50 pounds rather, and it was at a distance of eight feet. And then we also said that there was this other part of this force. This other part of this force was creating a torque, and that was 86.6, .6, and that was being applied at this point, and that was one foot away, so we got another torque. Well, what we really did is we took a sum of the torques. You could say that we had a torque here plus a torque here. Now, it just so happens it came from the same force, but it didn't need to. So we have a torque here due to this force and radius, a torque here due to this force and radius. We combine them and we get their total. Another way we could have done this, do you remember this? Another way we could have done it is we simply, instead of doing separating into components, say a torque in the vertical direction, a torque in the horizontal direction, we're going to add them together. We did R cross F. So in this case, we 
took a look at our definition of torque, we said R cross F. We did it as one vector, one vector radius, one vector force, one vector torque. We got the same answer, all right? Now, that tells us that, or that is an indication that we can separate torques into their components and we end up with the same answer. Now, let's get back to our result right here. Here we go, where we've taken one torque, added it to another torque, and we get the same thing. Now, usually, just for reference, the way this is often done is we'll do it in X and Y components. So let's say we have, uh, you know, this torque, and we'll say that's the same as um, the horizontal component. We'll say torque X plus the vertical component, torque Y. And then that way we can um, separate it into its X and Y components. Oftentimes we do it that way. Great. Now let's take a look at our third, our third rule in equivalent systems. It's actually a fairly simple one. Uh, let's look at the barge up here. I'm having one barge push. I'm adding two others pull. I want to make it clear that as long as you're pushing through the center of mass, pushing is the same as pulling. So pushing a dot or a barge or a bicycle, whatever, is the same as pulling. Now that's assuming you're going through the center of mass. And the name for this, that is called transmissibility. Great, so we've covered three of our rules for equivalent systems. We have one more, one more left, and like I said before, it's something you've already seen. We're returning once again to our porch swing problem. Now, I want to remind you what was happening here. We had the, um, let's see if we can get the, let's get all the white off. So we can kind of look carefully. We had um, this force right here. We knew what it was. And we needed to find out what the applied force was right here. So we said, well, it's not moving, so it has to be equal and opposite. Great. Now we have something equal and opposite. Well, what's that going to do? That's going to make the whole thing want to twist. Well, we know it's not twisting. So we also know that at the base of the house, there must be an equal and opposite torque. What we've effectively said is this equal and opposite torque was applied because there was a torque in the opposite direction somewhere. Let's think this through for a moment. All right, let's go, let's go back here. I'm going to write down the rule because I think we can make sense of it just by writing it down. And then we'll take a look at an example. If we have one force A and equal and opposite force B, that is the same as a corresponding torque. We'll call it torque C. Now they have to be equal and opposite. This is called a force couple. This happens more often than you might expect. And I'm going to show you an example that gives you, should give you a good intuitive understanding of it. The tire iron. All right, so let's check out this tire iron. How do you use it? You stick it on the nut, one side you push, one side you pull. Let's say the nut's here, you push, you pull, you push here, you pull here. The nut just experiences a twist. So if you're a nut, how do you know the difference between somebody pushing and pulling, they're not twisting the tire iron, and somebody putting a screwdriver on and twisting? You don't know the difference. Because from the nut's perspective, the same type of thing is being applied. There is a torque being applied. This is an example of an equivalent system. Whichever one you want to use, they're going to do the same effect. That's the force couple. So we've looked at four rules of equivalent systems that we can use to massage forces and torques as we work with it. On our return, on our next video, we're going to uh, jump into three more. I look forward to seeing you then.